Welcome back and thank you for choosing Current Connected. In today's video, we're going to be covering this 4S150 amp JBD BMS. We're gonna be showing you how to wire it up and get it up and running for your DIY lithium iron phosphate battery system. First things first, what's in the box? Well, we have the BMS unit itself here. We have a few wires that I'm gonna cover in just one moment, and then a black box. Now we're all probably wondering what's in the black box. Nothing special, it's just a converter for plugging into your computer. And in today's video, we're actually going to ignore the black box. For these wires, there's a few. I'm gonna start first with this blue one that seems um, to stand out the most. This is the USB cable that goes with that black box. And again, we're not gonna work with that in today's video. And then there is a three wire cable with four pin connectors. Um, this also goes with that um, converter box. And that leaves us with two wires here. One of them has a little circuit board on the end. This is the Bluetooth dongle for monitoring the BMS on your phone. And then there is the balance harness. And this is what connects to the cells so that the BMS can monitor the cell voltages and do any balancing necessary to keep everything working in unison. Now for today's video, I'm gonna be working with these 50 amp hour Narada cells. Now these are a little bit small for this BMS because their maximum discharge current is only 50 amps and this BMS here is rated for 150 amps. So with that being said, you would wanna choose some of our bigger cells, but if you did need some really high quality 50 amp hour cells, we'll link these in the description. Now this balance harness has wires with raw ends and they have a little bit of solder tinning on the end, but we can't really uh, connect these to the cell just as is. We need to um, add some stuff first. So what I've gone ahead and done off camera is prepared another balance harness with some ring terminals on it. And these are heat shrink terminals. So in other words, after you crimp them, um, you, you heat them up with the heat gun and this bit of, um, heat shrink here shrinks, and then we have a nice uh, end that we can properly connect to the cell terminal and get a nice solid connection. Now about 90% of the issues we have with this BMS is because these balance harnesses aren't crimped right. So make sure you use a good crimping tool. I prefer a ratcheting crimping tool. And um, of course these heat shrink connectors, they're glue lined so they can make sure that wire has a, a good solid connection that's not going to get damaged. So with this harness ready, we can go ahead and jump right into assembling this battery and getting the BMS wired up. One thing I do want to mention on these cells is that contrary to your initial thought, the black is actually positive. So we have a negative and a positive, a negative and a positive, negative and positive, and again negative and positive. Now these are three volt cells, so we need to use bus bars and connect them in series. So what that looks like is like this, okay? And now we have our main negative terminal here and our main positive terminal here. And obviously we're gonna to wanna to get some screws in here and I'm gonna do this one bar at a time, but wanna give you just a quick overview of what this is gonna look like. On this balance harness here, we have five pins. The black pin goes to the main negative, the red pin goes to the main positive, and the first white pin goes to cell one positive, the second white pin goes to cell two positive, and the third white pin goes to cell three positive. What that means is we can connect the red wire to the main positive terminal. And I'm only putting these screws in a little bit. And then on the balance harness, the wire immediately next to it um, is gonna go to cell three positive. So I'm gonna loosen this nut that I only tightened hand tight. So that way I can put this ring terminal between the washer and the bus bar itself. Now be very careful and wear safety glasses so that you don't, uh, you know, if you do short something out, you don't um, risk getting anything in your eyes. And then from there, the next white wire, this one right here, is gonna go to cell two positive. So I'm gonna connect that onto this terminal back here. The remaining wire will go to cell one positive. Um, that's the last white wire and that is this terminal here. And again, I wanna emphasize the ring terminal 
is between the bus bar and the washer of the screw. You don't want anything between the cell and the bus bar. You need that to be a perfect connection. And then from there, the last wire, which is the black wire, will go on the main negative terminal. Now there are two more cables we need to add. We need to add our main positive and main negative cable. For our main positive cable, I'm gonna be using this two foot length of six gauge cable. Now, typically I recommend a two gauge cable, but for the purpose of today's video, I'm using six gauge because it's easier to work with and um, will we'll work quite well. So I'm gonna remove this wire here and keep in mind this, this balance harness is not yet plugged into the BMS, that is very critical. I'm gonna put the cable straight onto the battery's terminal with the balance wire immediately above it. And that's gonna be our main positive wire that goes to all of our loads. Now I wanna stop real quick on the wiring and talk about a couple of accessories that we have. These are Y cables for the JBD BMS. And essentially they have a single lug on one side and two lugs on the other side. And they really make it easy for working with this BMS because there are two terminals for the B minus and C minus. I'm gonna explain what those are for here in a minute, but the point is each of these terminals here are only rated for 80 amps. So this is 150 amp BMS. So if you wanna use anything over the 80 amp capacity of the terminals, you need to use the two of them. So for that, we have this cable that is made of two six gauge conductors, which can easily handle 80 amps uh, in this application. And this can screw onto the BMS on the two um, terminals. And from there, um, we can run um, one end that will be, so the, the B minus side is the side that goes to the main negative terminal of the battery pack. And the C minus, that's gonna be like your common uh, ground for all your loads. That's where like your battery charger, your inverter, that sort of thing would connect onto. So I actually have two different variations of this cable. One of them here has a 5 16 ring, the other has a 3 8 So I'm gonna use the 5 16 for going to the cells. So I'm gonna connect that onto the two terminals here, mark B minus. You can see there's a laser etching on the unit that shows B minus. So I'm gonna connect one ring here and one ring on this one here. And then the cable with the 3 8 right here, that is gonna go onto the C minus terminal here um, because I'm gonna use a bus bar that has 3 8 studs. And I'll show you that here in a bit. Now, sometimes I find it useful to connect on the two um, connectors like this. But the problem is it's really close to this edge of the heat sink um, on the bottom of this terminal when they're like this. So a simple solution is to use a pair of pliers and grab onto this ring and bend it ever so slightly. So that way, now when it connects onto the BMS, it bends up and out of the way and we don't have the risk of it touching this heat sink here. So now that I've got this BMS set up with the Y cables, I'm gonna connect the Y cable that goes from the B minus port to the main negative of this battery pack. And it's very important to get this connection made before you plug the balance wires into the BMS. Otherwise the BMS can um, function improperly or even cause damage to the BMS. So that would go something like that and typically I mount the uh, BMS to the side of the cells. I'll kind of show you that here. Um, but unfortunately these cells are tiny. So, you know, like I mentioned earlier, these cells are a little too small for this BMS, but for filming purposes, uh, that's why I chose them. And now you have back here that red wire we showed earlier, that's gonna go um, as the output to your loads. And then the C minus on the BMS, that's gonna be your other output. So now the final step before plugging into the uh, BMS is to tighten down all these screws to the proper torque. And then from there, we can plug the balance wire into the BMS. So now that everything is tightened down, I do need to verify all of the pins on this harness. So to do that, I'm gonna use my multimeter and measure the two uh, wires next to each other. And you should have 
right around 3.2 volts. It's gonna match whatever voltage your cells are at. So as you can see, I have my probes right in here. There are little metal contacts. I know you can't see it, but right now my meter is reading 3.29 volts, and that is not negative voltage. Now when you're doing this, be very careful not to get the uh, probes of the meter to touch, because that would effectively be like shorting out a battery, and that wouldn't be good. And just go down the harness like I just did, and make sure in all cases you have 3.2 volts. Once you've done that, you're gonna plug this main balance harness into this connector right here on the BMS, like so. And then inside, you'll see there's a little tiny blue light. See that little tiny blue light blinking? That indicates that the BMS is working properly. And now if we measure from our main positive wire to the main negative wire, hopefully this is visible, you'll see there are 13.19 volts and uh, this is ready to go. It's hooked up and ready to go into use. The only other thing is that there are two temperature sensors here and it's a good idea to tape these to the cells. Usually I use Kapton tape, but I don't have any today. Now, if you wanna use the Bluetooth function, simply plug this uh, Bluetooth dongle into the port marked UART. And from there, you are good to go. You can connect to this with Bluetooth, and I'll put a link to the app in the description below, as well as a different video coming soon on how to connect with Bluetooth and going through all the menus. So if this was helpful, be sure to leave a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next video.